Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. The federal government's revenue rose by 76% from $7.1 trillion in 2022 to $12.5 trillion in 2023, driven by 200% increase in oil revenue, which is about $2.4 trillion, and a 57.8% rise in non-oil revenue, which is about $10.1 trillion. Higher crude oil production, which increased from 1.31 uh, million barrels per day in 2022 to 1 1.41 million barrels per day in 2023, contributed to an 83.9% performance of actual gross oil and gas revenue, amounting to $7.87 trillion. Now, non-oil taxes exceeded projections with corporate income tax, CIT, and value-added tax, VAT, generating $4.27 trillion and $3.64 trillion, surpassing targets by 103.9% and 23.2% respectively. The Budget Office anticipates further revenue growth from ongoing reforms under the Renewed Hope Agenda and improved tax transparency, as highlighted in the 2023 Tax Transparency in Africa report. Now, joining us to have a discussion on this is Mukhtar Mohammed, is the CEO of Finance with Mukhtar. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure to be here this morning. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning to you. So taxes, oil, of course, they've um, increased our revenue uh, now at 76%. So is that something we should celebrate at the moment? Is that, you know, something to be happy about, knowing that um, things will just get better? Because according to the budget office, they're saying, you know, this is a step in the right direction. Is this something um, that we think will just whip up our economy? I want to get your take on this. What was your initial reaction when you saw this story? Good news. Uh, we, we must celebrate every milestone, especially an economy that is bleeding. Mm -hmm. So whatever, whatever milestone you are able to uh, to achieve, you need to celebrate it. And again, when you get a tax that jacked up our revenue by 76%, uh, that's good. And especially, again, in Nigeria, we've not been able to get the informal sector. We've not been able to truly widen the, trap back, uh, the tax bracket, like I said, truly right in the tax bracket. So um, it's something to celebrate. Um, but again, it's something to also look at how much impact has it had in the life of the people. Because if you look at this report, corporate tax has gone up, and revenue for government has gone up. It um, doesn't mean that the companies are doing very well. It doesn't mean that government revenue is adding value to the people. I think that's where the challenge comes, and that's why sometimes you say you can't comprehend what you see in terms of economic performance data with the reality on ground on the life of the people. If corporate tax is going up, is what is VAT is going up? I mean, a lot of people are spending. I mean, there's a lot of money in the hands of people. And again, if you you are saying that um, taxes on non oil sector has gone up, that means we are beginning to see the, the diversification that we are. We have always wanted, if you say, okay, oil tax also revenue has gone up almost 76%, uh, 1.41 million barrel per day, which is something we should celebrate. But when you look at OPEC figure, OPEC is telling you at the 1.33 million barrel per day. So there's a lot of contradiction on, on what you see and the reality in the life of the people. Well, you said every milestone should be celebrated. Not if the milestone is taking you closer to your, to your grave. Mm -hmm. uh, because if I'm going to be crucified somewhere, every milestone is so going to be something that will uh, make my, uh, my heart skip. Mm -hmm. The fact that the, the tax is, uh, has made the revenue to go up shows that, okay, revenue has gone up. But it means, like you said, that people are spending more. Uh, is, is it... We would have been happier if the tax made the revenue go up because more people were brought into the tax net and it necessarily did not have to rise. But here we see a situation where <clears throat> the tax rose, VAT rose, every other one rose high up. So do you really think Nigerians should be rejoicing? For instance, there's, there's a, a story here on The Guardian this morning which said that chemical industry says 28 companies exited since January. So things don't seem to get better because people are running away and Nigerians are still suffering. Do you still think we should rejoice? Well, we have to rejoice in the little milestone, like I said. But again, uh, like I said again, in reality on ground, it doesn't uh, add up. But 
we must know that um, in terms of reforms, reforms favor some sector and doesn't favor some sector. That's how reform is. Reform is not a reform that will favor every sector of the economy. For the long run, it normally favor every sector of the economy. But reform is not normally targeted at making the life of the people better. And um, based on what you're saying, uh, what we see on ground, the life of the people is not commensurate with what we are seeing in terms of reform. But when you look at taxes as a way of growing your economy, as a way of providing job for the economy, then you begin to see the impact of taxes. But what we have seen in this report thus far, we we're just looking at revenue. Revenue, 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 revenue. We have not looked at how have these revenue have impact on the life of the people, how they been able to create employment for the for the for, 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 for Nigerians, how they be able to bring more Nigeria out of the poverty level. We didn't, we didn't see that in the report, and it's coming from the budget office. We some people who say it's taking to the pinch of salt because it's all about um, trying to pen the administration that uh, oh, we are doing something well. Remember, the vice president said some couple of days that um, by the coming years we'll begin to see the benefit, we'll begin to reap the, the benefit of the of the reform. But again, when you talk about um, tax, we've gone beyond tax for revenue. It's now becoming tax on how to grow your economy. So I could say that, okay, we've been able to achieve tax in the area of revenue. Now the next big step we need to take is to see how we can use tax to grow an economy. And in growing our economy, we are using tax to create more jobs. And if you create more jobs, then you get more people into the tax net. That is the way the tax uh, policy works in this day, age and time. Not all about the revenue that do not have the direct impact on the life of the people because if you are earning so much revenue and the life of the people is 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 worse than when when you will when you will not be making so much of it then you need to sit back and think what are you really doing i think fine the government has gotten the revenue which is good how is this revenue being used is it being used to bring up infrastructure i mean build infrastructure is it being used to create jobs is it being used to grow the informal sector is it being used to help the sme is it being, is it being used to get uh, people to want to set up more businesses because the, the business microeconomy it is still all of all the what i just said and by what uh, we are seeing on ground yeah. It does not call for so much celebration. Okay, so like you've just mentioned a few things on what, where the, the money should be channeled to, right? So how do you think um, they should go about it in the coming fiscal year? Um, the impacts, what, what's, what are the top priorities you think the government needs to look at right now when it comes to this money that you're making? First and foremost, you need to see how those money can put food in the tables of every Nigeria. I mean, and that is how can you use this money to grow uh, uh, um, the, 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 I mean, well, I'm sorry, I mean, to get Nigeria out of the poverty level. That's yeah. one thing you should be looking. How do you use this money? How is this money going to benefit put food on the table? How is this money going to create jobs? How is this money going to uh, bring in more earnings and more, more power to the hands of the average Nigeria? And when you are looking at that, the key problem Nigerians are having now, the main issue is food. How is this money channeled towards food security? That for me is the key. How is this money channeled towards securing of life and property also because we are still battling insecurity banditry so the farmers cannot go to farm and kidnapping people cannot travel and so those those are what we should be looking at and then how is this money going to be used to build infrastructure it's very key to have infrastructure and in terms of this infrastructure how does it help in terms of building an infrastructure especially power then you are beginning to improve the life of the people to be self-productive Productivity is the key that can sustain any economic growth. So for me, I think that's where the government should be looking at. Like I said, this revenue have come in. How can this revenue now begin to grow the economy? How can this revenue now create jobs? How can this revenue now begin to put food on the table of Nigeria? How can this revenue bring prosperity to every Nigeria? That is what the government should be looking at. And I think um, maybe that's what the vice president means when he said we'll begin to see the dividends of some of these uh, reforms. Yeah, well, uh, Bala just said that as well, that in the first uh, quarter of 2025, we'll see the dividends of these reforms is going to be that. Mm. But 
my problem right now is whether to believe these figures that are being bandied or not because it came uh, just after, first of all, the World Bank said the policies Nigeria is uh, implementing, they had no hand in it or something uh, close to that. I'm trying to paraphrase that. And then the IMF came out and said the policies in Nigeria are not working. They have mm -hmm. to re-strategize. Boom. We just saw how our economy is growing because of X, Y, Z. And I don't know uh, how much of these figures that you believe. Uh, because, like you said, until we begin to feel the impact, we may not, we may not know whether okay. the economy is really growing or not. But how do you x-ray, for instance, the, the statement of IMF that there are policies are not working? Being one of the organizations that we accuse of uh, giving us things that we are swallowing uh, mm -hmm. hook, line, and sinker. Well, um, I, you know, we've said in your program before now that um, IMF policy has never helped any country. I mean, especially in sub Saharan Africa and Africa, you have to go back to structural adjustment program. You have to go back to a lot of removal in terms of um, uh, uh, um, subsidy. We do not see that I policy has not really helped anybody. So for me, I, 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 I think they are, or they are, they are whatever they are trying to help us achieve with a pinch of salt. Now, why am I saying that? Is this the IMF? When I mean say the policy is not working, if you look at that report. It also is saying that you know, the policy is not working because there are still some other area that we think the government should take a very strong stance, which will drive those Nigerians to the poverty level. Because what they are saying is that look, we, what we have seen thus far, yes, it's there, but we think we should do enough. You should remove subsidy in every area of the Nigerian economy. You should begin to, you know, their policies are always uh, driven by um, textbook economics. Uh, and we keep saying it here, and I've said it on your program. IMF is not in Damatu. IMF is not in Portusco. IMF is not in Jalingo. IMF is not in Kazuri. IMF is not in Econ Cross River State. Neither is IMF in Oafia. It, it's not there. They don't, they, don't, they don't have those. They don't have those data. So from Nigeria to grow, you don't look at Lagos, you don't look at Abuja, you don't look at Rivers, you don't look at uh, Delta, and then I may begin to tell you that, oh, based on what we have seen in Delta, we have seen in Rivers, we have seen in Abuja, we have seen in Lagos, we think this is where we grow. No, you need to go to the rural area because 80% of Nigerians are in the rural area. And I think we know that so it is not left for government to draw up their own policy based on the needs of the people. Today, what the people in the rural area need is that we want to go to farm. We can't go to farm. We need security. That's what they need. Yeah. IMF is not talking about addressing security problem. IMF is talking about how they bring the inflation. And in Nigeria, I keep saying, the most vibrant sector of the Nigerian economy is the informal sector. And when you high credit, you are killing that sector because what it means is that cost of funds will go up. So for me, I, I am not an, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of IMF. I'm not a fan of World Bank. I'm only a fan of IMF and World Bank. If World Bank and IMF is going to key into your own economic policy, not you key into their own economic policy, that, like what is happening in Egypt. Egypt came out with their own economic policy. This is what we want to do. IMF, this is what we need from you. World Bank, this is what we need from you. World Bank, they have option. I bet they, they key into it. But when you are the one key into their own policies, it's probably a textbook economic policy that normally, normally, over the years, no help in the African country, especially right. in Nigeria. Yeah, that, that is true, because you have to look at the um, you, have, you have to just look at the people that you're bringing these policies to and ensure that it's something that will work for them. But so one thing I want to talk about is transparency and accountability, and that is, um, that, is, that is a major issue in Nigeria, especially when it comes to the government and the people. We never really see as much transparency from them or accountability. We don't know what they do. We don't know what the monies, you know, that they get are used for. And with this now on paper, it says, you know, our economy is growing. We have more revenue. Um, it has increased about 76%. But the common man might never really understand what that is because there is no impact, as, except, you know, the government is transparent enough. So how do you think they can start to, um, you know, bring Nigerians along just to have that level of trust with the government by being transparent and accountable? Well, uh, fortunately, it's the IUD journalists that are supposed to make us know all this. So we throw it back to you, journalists. Uh, 
you are supposed to did the I tell us the results. I mean, tell us that we just receive such money, such money. In the whole of economy, what drive government into the policy at your true true journalism? I mean, when you have you have you will call it you people call it investigative journalism. A lot of since President Tinubu came to power, a lot of states have earned so much. But how much impact are that being to the people? Those are the challenges. You just talk about transparency. We've seen a lot of revenue came, come into the three tiers of government. But what we as a Nigeria sometimes concentrate, we look at the federal, we leave the state, we leave the local government. It, it's high time we begin to look at revenue, revenue, revenue. How is this sharing formula been? They say, no, nah, local government are no more under state according to the Supreme Court judgment. That means that their revenue, their uh, funds come directly to them. How is this fund being spent? Are the government still hijacking these funds? Those are things that ordinary Nigerians might not get access to. It. You journalists have the freedom of information. You can go in and get those figures and let us know. But for transparency, I think um, this government have not been transparent enough. The first time we have transparency in government in terms of uh, uh, funding in terms of the allocation that goes to say it was far back as uh, the time the second coming of uh, Ngozi Kudu where we, the publishing of um, each state what they have received in terms of um, funding from the federal government with the federation account or through the um, um, uh, um, um, other like the the, 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 the oil producing states uh, also how much they have re received through the derivative fund of the law. But thus far, we have not seen that. We will always see the current administration pride themselves to say, look, we've been able to improve revenue to states, and which is true based on the figures that we get. But again, how much has gone to each state? And each state government, in terms of transparency, how much transparent have they been? Rather, what we hear is that most of this money, when they come in, are responsible for the high exchange rate that we are saying because governments are having a lot of money in their hands and they are combating this money to, to dollars to travel, to make SSC trips abroad, to go to, to, to travel, to look for investors. Or sometimes again, these monies are being changed into dollars. For, for, to be kept in their own house for corruption, for, for, for corrupt, uh, corrupting mm -hmm. because again, why is that being done? Uh, because of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission, because of the international community uh, stance on uh, corruption. Most of these funds cannot find their way into the Swiss bank again, like it used to be before, because it's even safer for them to leave, leave the money in Nigeria and keep it in their house than taking it abroad because uh, they, they are able to collect this money from them. So I think. Um, Government must be transparent enough. Corruption must be dealt with. And in terms of dealing with corruptions, that you need to tie it to let us know how much of this money comes. Now, the state needs to tie some of this money to projects. It's not a situation whereby it sees these days because the money is no more coming to the state direct. The state are beginning to hijack local government projects and then the local government have to pay them for some of these projects. Those are part of the challenges that we have as a nation. Because why? The reason why we continue to have these challenges is because we've not been able to build a very strong institutions that will be able to look the governors in their eye, look the, 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 the local government chairmen in the eye, and say, this is what is obtained. This is how it's supposed to be done. But rather, you can only see achievement when you have strong men, and strong men will never be there forever. Well, do you think this uh, uh, tax reform bill will... will will be part of this building of strong institutions like you see. Uh, it, there's been a fight here and there and uh, maybe we've not seen uh, the last of this uh, tax reform bill. But do you think that that's a document that will change the narrative in the Nigerian financial space as we wrap up? I totally agree with you. That document will change the narrative. You know, I've talked about that document in your program. I feel that that's the best economic policy teams. Yeah, it's not 100% fantastic. You can say, oh, everything there is, is good. There are still, still need to be the rigid here and there, especially in the in, 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 in the area of um, of uh, uh, um, taxes, widening the tax bracket, getting more Nigerians into the tax bracket. I feel when governments say want to get more Nigerians into the tax bracket, it's taxing the already tax. So I think that should be worked on. But when you look at that, be why I'm so excited about that be is the potentiality that be hold for small businesses, which I say is the life wire. Of the Nigerian economy, and that again, the value-added tax, which has become a challenge, also that that's where the potential of this economy lies. Because if you are not adding value, then you are not you are not supposed to enjoy from the value-added tax. No matter whether somebody is saying that we Lagos want to colonize the north, or but it's just being lazy. 
trying to push the blame off or you want us to continue to do things over. By the time you begin to see that most companies have value added tax, what they, then you begin to add value. You won't tell a company that a company cannot sell a product in your state, but when it comes to the value added tax, you are going to share it. Then that means if you know that that company's ad is paying the other state more value added tax, you begin to think of how you can create the environment to bring that company to your own state. And this will in turn add uh, economic prosperity for your people and provide jobs. So for me, I think that tax in terms of addressing businesses and taking that layback, lazy nature of the feeding bottle federalism that we have practiced, for me, those are the two game changers. And also looking at that tax, also company income tax being reduced also, that may yeah. Okay, we just lost your audio for a moment there. If you can just give a final statement, maybe in the next uh, 30 seconds, so that we can wrap up. Let's begin to see tax as a way to grow our economy rather than to see tax as a way to tax the people. For me, that is what I keep saying. It doesn't matter the revenue you have from taxes. If it's not having impact on the life of your people, nobody will take you serious. So for me, my take is... Can we use tax to begin to grow our economy? Can we use tax to attract big players into our economy? For me, until that happens, I'm not excited about revenue from taxes. Mm, okay. All right. Thank you so much for that. Um, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this morning. Thank you for joining our program. We wish you an amazing day. Thank you to you. Have a pleasant week. You too. Yeah. All right. So, speaking with Mokhtar Mohammed, is the CEO of Finance with Mokhtar. And we've just been looking at the story whereby our revenues, well, oil and taxes have increased our revenue by 76%. We'll go on a short break now. When we return, we're talking about a bill that is slated for next week. Please stay with us.